Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is assignment five of CompTIA Server Plus. And from the image here, we actually see this guy uh, upgrading uh, one of his servers in his server room. This is an iStock photo. So you see a little X there and a little symbol there. Courtesy of iStock, and if you like that server, you can go to their uh, iStock.com uh, and purchase it. But uh, besides that, you know, if you've taken A+, and you've taken M+, then you have about 80% of the skills needed really to go in and start working in a server room and upgrading servers. But hold on. Uh, upgrading a server is not the same as upgrading your own personal PC. Oh yeah, you may do some of the same task, upgrade memory, upgrade processor, upgrade the BIOS. But the difference is, is that as opposed to actually uh, just your machine that you can shut down anytime you want, you could possibly have thousands of people hooked to that server. So any uh, interrupt of... Uh, service could really cost you dollars in the short and long run so you want to make sure that you operate as efficiently as possible so before you even start thinking about upgrading your server you actually have to plan ahead and the better your planning is and the more upfront work you do the more efficiently your servers are going to run just one more comment if you notice a number of the server photos I've been showing you, they look great. I mean, these server rooms are crystal clean. This is just like perfect. This is nothing like any of the server rooms I've ever worked in. Mine are have always been trashed and messed. You see all these uh, servers are so perfectly uh, matched and are all the same. <laughs> Typically, there's one server for one vendor and one server from another vendor and <laughs> wherever you can get them. So not the same as what I'm used to. Uh, here's uh, 10 questions for your assignment. Make sure you do those and turn those into me next week. And just a few uh, tips on upgrading the server. Make sure you have a nice little checklist like this. I have 16 things right here. First thing you want to do when you're uh, thinking about upgrading and working on your server is you know, locate the latest hardware drives, operating systems, and uh, other software. Uh, review the uh, FAQs uh, of the hardware and news groups and uh, for the upgrade that you're going to perform. Uh, verify uh, the compatibility of your memory with your operating system and your hardware. Uh, record settings of your CMOS and your BIOS. Don't let those get lost. Uh, verify uh, your resources, uh, uh, IRQ, DMA, IO. Uh, download the most recent drivers and BIOS. Inventory uh, deliverable parts. Make sure you have them available. Make sure you've put your hands on them. Make sure they're going to go into that room with you because when you shut that machine down, you don't want any surprises. You want to make sure that you have everything you need. It's all in working order and you put it in as quickly as possible and efficiently. Get it out. Get Put it in. Uh, get out of there and check everything out and make sure everything runs and turn the, get that system operating as soon as possible. Uh, perform the uh, tape backup. Don't wait for the regular tape backup that happens, you know, uh, every afternoon because you're going to lose data. Do it immediately and then shut down and then you're ready to go uh, for your uh, work. And uh, Test the upgrade and perform a pilot test. Uh, certainly the more serious the upgrade is, you definitely want to pilot it before you actually uh, go and do that. You want it to run smoothly and once again not uh, get in there and find out, uh-oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Schedule the downtime for the upgrade, make sure everyone knows. Perform a full system backup before attempting the upgrade as we said earlier you know, that tape backup or however you might do it. Uh, implement ESD best practices. Do not end up frying your servers. You know, take precautions. Confirm that the NOS uh, has recognized the upgrade. Make sure your UPS meets the new wattage and amperage uh, upgrade requirements. You may have just upgraded your server. May need more amperage so that UPS may not be able to ham handle it the wattage or the amperage. And if it can't, then you will not have a smooth uh, shutdown if a power interruption occurs. And uh, document and upgrade. Benchmark your system. You know, you're just, this is good for you to know if you've actually improved things or made them worse. Reset your baseline. And uh, I do that uh, not just with servers, but also when I program to make sure I'm making something more efficient. I have to have something running and testing instead of baseline. One more thing that you might want to do whenever you go into the server is carry a can of air. There's certainly going to be dust in there and just spray it out while you're on the inside. So take those uh, tips and uh, I'm sure you can add to this list as you continue to work with your own servers. And uh, then I go through adding processors make sure the N plus uh, 1 stepping process is matched, that your uh, processors are not like uh, two orders of magnitude lower than the new processors that you're putting in. Make sure you look at the uh, BIOS for a single processor. You want to go ahead and uh, update that BIOS and stick that processor in. But if you're upgrading multiple BIOS, but if you're doing multiple processes, of course, you want to make sure you put all the processes in first and then upgrade the BIOS. Uh, 
Here's some information on updating drives, uh, ATA, SATA, SCSI. And we've already gone through that in previous uh, chapters. Just make sure for your SCSI drive uh, that you are, in a sense, terminating with the final device and that you set the jumper to do that. Uh, adding memory, we talked about that. You know, memory can actually be a bottleneck, believe it or not, because if you have lots of memory, you think more memory is better. But if you're adding memory that's slower than the memory you have in your uh, servers, it can actually slow your whole entire server down. Also, same thing is true about processor. You might think if I add a new processor, I've just sped my system up, but you can actually add a new processor and slow the system down, create a bottleneck, because when you add those new processors, you've got to make sure that the cache matches the speed for that processor, and if it doesn't, then you're going to end up actually slowing your server down. So once again, things you need to take into to account when you're actually upgrading your systems. Flashing a BIOS, I actually put six steps in uh, flashing the BIOS. So you've got to be very careful here. I said think before you flash. And uh, that's very important because, you know, when you shut down an actual system, uh, the only thing really left, once you've taken the batteries out and disconnected all power, is that BIOS. And it doesn't matter what you do, it's still going to stay there. But if you flash that BIOS and, and you make a mistake or there's a power interruption during the flashing process, then what's going to happen? That will just be a dead piece of hardware. Now, you can recover, but it's more difficult. Try not to make that mistake. And here's a procedure for actually uh, flashing your BIOS. And uh, once again, so once again, think before you flash. Make sure you determine the current BIOS uh, from the post and obtain the latest BIOS program from the vendors. Load the BIOS program on a floppy disk. This is the old days. Then boot from the floppy because it's going to hit the A drive first. And then, and once you've followed the vendor's outline for installing the BIOS, make sure there's not a power interruption during that BIOS flash because if there is, you're going to end up with a dead piece of hardware. Make sure you got your UPS hooked up and ready to go. Uh, a little bit about updating adapter cards, a little blur video from uh, Messer. And one more thing, too, uh, you can actually hot swap in these servers. And a lot of the bigger servers that are actually running thousands of customers do need to have uh, cards hot swapped. Basically, you're just going to open up the chassis. Actually, when it's live, make sure you're following uh, correct procedures. Uh, release the lever, which removes the power from the slot. Install the adapter. Close the slot, uh, release lever. And then press the PCI hot plug button, which will enable that power for that slot again. And close the chassis. And you've just done a hot swap on your server. Just a few uh, blurbs on adding different peripheral devices. A, a blurb about IRQ, I.O., base memory, and DMA channels, which allows uh, your uh, adapters to talk to the directly to memory without going through the processor. And finally, the the upgrading your UPS. Make sure that when you've upgraded your server and you've done all this stuff, it may now be drawing more power, more power than the wattage and amperage on your UPS. And if that's the case, then you will not have a smooth shutdown and you'll have an interrupt. And that's what you do not want to do. So make sure that your UPS wattage and amperage actually meet the requirements of your upgrade. A lot of information in this, a lot of fun stuff. Starting to get into the cool stuff. Once again, uh, you've probably got a lot of these skills already, about 80% of the skills that you need to work in a server room from A plus and N plus. But what you have to get from this chapter is all the planning that goes behind actually doing a good server switch or a good server upgrade. So make sure you take a look at your checklist. Do all the upfront work. And if you do, then that will go smoothly. And if you've never done a particular type of upgrade before, make sure you've hit the news groups and you've talked to someone who has and take advantage of uh, mistakes that people have made in the past and don't make those same mistakes. So good luck with your server upgrades. This was Mike Lively, and this is Lesson 5 on uh, upgrading your servers. And we'll see you next time.